Good evening. As one liberal put it, there's no turning back now. The three opposition parties signed a history-making agreement today aimed at defeating the Harper government and leading Canada through tough economic times. The deal creates a liberal NDP coalition supported by the Bloc Québécois. Its first mission to topple the Conservatives. But the government says it will consider all options to avoid that, including shutting down Parliament. We have extensive coverage ahead, led by our chief political correspondent, Keith Bogue. Keith. Peter, Canada's Parliament and its politics are on the doorstep of an historic evolution, as the remaining obstacles to a Liberal NDP coalition government are very few indeed. Reporters roamed the jam corridors outside the party caucus rooms as Liberal MPs tried to keep their feet on the ground and stay in the moment, as giddy and almost unbelievable as that moment was. We have to stay focused. The coalition deal with the NDP was done. The deal about who would lead it, who would be Prime Minister, was not. And then this peak inside as the caucus wrapped up. An internal struggle between Stéphane Dion and his caucus might have scuppered the deal. The declared leadership candidates had spent the previous evening together crafting their response. And this was it. We've decided that the only person and the best person to lead and form a coalition government is the elected leader of our party, the leader of the opposition, Stéphane Zion. We are comfortable with that. We support that. And so in one giant, very complicated and totally unexpected leap, Dion is now poised to become Canada's 23rd Prime Minister, just 45 days after leading his party to one of the worst electoral defeats in its history. Nothing quite like this has ever happened in this country. This will be a Liberal-led government in collaboration with the New Democratic Party and with the support of the Bloc Québécois. Here are the broad strokes. The coalition, if it succeeds in forming government, will give the full powers of the Prime Minister to Dion. The Minister of Finance will be a Liberal. The Cabinet will have 24 ministers and six of those will be appointed from the NDP caucus. The accord will expire on June 30th, 2011. There is also an agreement with the Bloc Québécois not to defeat the coalition government. That agreement expires or will be renewed in 18 months. Dion had promised to resign the leadership in May. That doesn't change. Uh, May 2nd, my successor, I think will be proud of what we will have been able to achieve. Jack Layton is now likely to be the first New Democrat member of the federal cabinet who didn't have to ditch his party to get there. I think it's likely to produce very good government. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be here. In the House of Commons, Dion enjoyed a standing ovation from Liberals and New Democrats alike. Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister bring clarity in this House and allow Parliament to demonstrate its non-confidence in this government? The coalition starts out with political vulnerabilities and the Prime Minister knows where they are. I can just tell you, Mr. Speaker, I would certainly not want to find myself uh, governing this economy today and in this position uh, under a situation where I was required to follow social socialist economics and be at the behold and be at the behest of the veto of the separatists. The Mr. Flaherty, what do you do now to avoid defeat? There's no denying the depth of trouble the Conservatives are in. A week from now, they might be in the opposition benches. But a week is a long time in politics, and there is one more move they could make. They could ask the Governor General to prorogue. To prorogue means to discontinue Parliament. That's one way to avoid a confidence vote. But proroguing is normally used only when the government has finished its agenda, not before it's even begun. But Conservatives are considering it anyway. The government will uh, consider all uh, steps that are reasonable to protect the interests of our, of our country uh, and the interests of Canadians, uh, particularly in these uncertain economic times. This constitutional law expert says the government is within its rights. It would be legal. It would not be illegal or unconstitutional for him to do that. Whether it's politically feasible is quite another question. I'm not sure that Canadians in this economic climate would want to be sitting without a parliament in session. There is euphoria for the coalition at this moment, but they're not home free yet. Whether the government asks for prorogation this week or the opposition asks to form a government next week, the answer will have to come from the Governor-General. 
And so it seems all but certain that Mikhail Jean will be making some history herself. Peter. All right, Keith, thank you. Keith Bogue in Ottawa.